Hey everybody, Sam reporting here. Uh, it's been a while since I've spoken with you, and I thought it was probably time I should. So, uh, I don't have a lot... That's not true. I have quite a lot to show you. But it's kind of difficult. It's all in various stages of production. I'm a lot of caught up on stuff, so I thought I would sweep it all aside and just give you how I'm doing. There's been some interesting things here, and one interesting event in particular I'll cover in depth. So let's start with how I'm doing. I'm actually doing pretty well. Uh, honestly, the recovery from the surgery back in May, and if you hadn't heard, I had brain surgery, although if you know who I am, uh, I can't believe you don't know, but whatever. Uh, the surgery went well. Uh, I was out in three days, and I was mostly back to normal... Uh, physically inside of a couple weeks. It's a, you know, it, it's the brain tumor to get. But recovery took a lot longer than I was expecting. I was told somewhere on the order of, uh, you know, three or four or five or six months, and it's taking a little bit longer than that. Um, you know, I, I sound okay. I'm, I'm talking to people. The more, like, intellectually interfacing parts of my job have been kind of difficult. For example, I've only really been able to code again in the last month. And I've taken advantage of that, believe me. And coding isn't very much fun for video, so, you know. So uh, I, I got a lot of well wishes and a lot of comments, more than I could ever respond to with my slow brain. And I just want to thank everybody again, and I will probably thank you individually as well. It, it, it really was... Uh, it was a very... It was a very strange thing to be, you know, one, on, on the one hand, to be told that there's something definitely wrong with you, but on the other hand, to have the community come out in droves to support you. It was a emotional roller coaster, but I am happy to say the roller coaster ends on an incline. So, you know, at least for now. Entropy still exists, right? Um, so... How's the studio doing? For the most part, wonderfully. Actually, one of the reasons that I haven't been able to talk to you very much or show you what I'm up to is uh, because this is actually a functioning radio station now with a staff that manages a lot of things that I used to. And uh, we are a functioning community radio station. And as a result, I have had to act as a station manager, not just an engineer. And the station manager stuff is actually probably where I have the most fun, but it doesn't really make for great video yet. Content is being made here. Content is being made elsewhere. A lot of cool stuff is happening. On the other hand, I recently made a big mistake. I, I don't know, I don't know how to discuss it. Um, so we should probably call it the salt debacle. If you're on my Patreon, I sent you a video of me making a stirrer out of a dead hard drive and some other equipment that I had lying around. And, um, and I was making salt. And that is precisely what I was doing, making salt. The idea is not something I'm going to get into, because actually it's kind of a joke and it was an idea for a video, but I, I literally woke up one morning and thought to myself, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make some salt today. I don't know why. Maybe it's just things beginning to knit back together, but uh, th that's the idea that I had. So first I was gonna make salt using bleach and uh, bleach and hydrochloric acid. Uh, hey, that's gonna create chlorine gas, Sam. Yes, yes it is. So I decided to do it outside because it was a particularly windy day and I figured that would be enough. Uh, after one dose of hydrochloric acid, it wasn't enough, and I, uh, I mustard gassed myself. I recovered. Uh, it wasn't a bad dose, but yeah, uh, I ain't joking about that one. I, I did the math, and I thought it would be okay, and I was completely wrong. Um, but I was, I noticed I was wrong pretty quickly, stopped what I was doing, uh, I got the, the baking soda I had, and neutralized it all, and then it was safe. It was actually even safe to dump at that point. Um, but I still wanted to make salt. So I had a backup solution, which involved that hydrochloric acid and that baking soda, and that generated the video that you saw. And that worked pretty well. Did I make salt crystals? Yes, but in the drying procedure, I made a couple of miscalculations 
that ended up spewing this room, the room that we're in right now, the engineering room, in basically an atmosphere of water, salt, and acid. Everything in here corroded. Everything. And it started corroding before I left for Chicago. When I came in here, saw everything was corroding. I was immediately going to get on a plane. I'm like, nope, cannot deal with this. Closed door, lock, do not go in there. Deal with it when I get back. We came back. Becky was up with me until entirely too late in the a.m. To, uh, to fix my mistake. And while things are good, there are problems. So let's 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 look at what I've been up to, hey? Uh, let's take a look at it. Let's first take a look at the damage. And I'm gonna look at the pictures as you do. So, most of it, it didn't occur to me to photograph, to document my shame. I just wanted to fix it. So a lot of the, the pictures that you're gonna see are after we've cleaned it up. But this one isn't. Here you go. This is a motherboard I was actually working on that was on my desk. Uh, one of several, in fact. And um, it was new. It's, uh, it, it, it's new. A friend of mine says it has an aesthetic. And uh, while I like aesthetics, I'm not sure that I'm ready for an operational server with a patina, if you know what I mean. So that had to be cleaned up. Um, the damage, this isn't a great photo, but the damage made it to my SDR equipment, which is all right there. I don't know how damaged that is. I'm kind of afraid to look at it. But the screws in the SMAs all have to be replaced. That's that's not a question. Except maybe the two that are capped there, but that's the clock in and the clock out. The antenna's as open as you like. Um, here is a motherboard after I've cleaned it up. You can see some of the staining on the PS2 connector block over on the right, and definitely on the uh, DVI connector there in the middle. Um, that one, we, this one we just fully submerged, uh, which is fine because this one is, is passively cooled, so we didn't have to do anything weird. Um, uh, yeah. And then this is, this is one of the real, real bad ones. This is the logic board for a, uh, for a Raspberry Pi compute module. And as you know, if you're into Raspberry Pis, you know these things are, are hen's teeth to get. Uh, actually, the, the logic board, if you know where to go, those are easy to find. But the, the, the CM4 itself, that, there is a CM4 with 8 gig of RAM. You know how hard those are to find? And there it is with a wacky color, discoloration and stuff like that. It seems to boot up, but now I can't. This is only ever going to be a development module. I'll never, I will never feel comfortable putting it into production. And in fact, I'm probably going to just put a heat sink on it, just because it need, not because it needs it, but just to make me feel better. Fortunately, it's it's just, there's no EMMC or Wi-Fi on it. It's just an eight gig Raspberry Pi uh, CM4, but that's, you know, still. Try to find one. <laughs> Here's a whole bunch of tools that, uh, that didn't make it. Um, those are, they are cleaned, but they're also very rusty and very gritty and the moving parts don't work. And well, I'm not gonna keep I'm not going to keep rusted drill bits, you know, those are consumable, so. And well, uh, the camera, this is the camera I did the time lapse on and it's acting all squirrely. And in fact, my workstation ran the entire time I was gone. I came back into town, try and did a package update and rebooted it, cleaned up all the rust, the back of this monitor was rusty, everything, and uh, I didn't come back. It just refused. Um, it, it pooped its brains out. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. I pulled all the stuff out of it uh, that I could and uh, everything that looked good. And it, it went back to the recycler. Um, in fact, that, that computer didn't come from the recycler. It came from um, my friend Nathan. So thank you for that. That machine did a lot more work than perhaps you were expecting. Uh, it was an Intel Precision T3600. I didn't take a picture of it because it's an Intel T3600. If you've seen one, you know what they look like. Also, another thing I discovered is like, the cords don't work. For a while, I thought it was the HDMI cable. It would do stuff like this.
And I was like, oh God, is it gonna be the laptop? Is it, and I'll tell you, I'll explain why it might be the laptop in a minute. Is it gonna be the laptop? Is it gonna be the monitor? Uh, fortunately, it turned out to be the cable in this case. So like, okay, the cable's gone. But like, there's definitely corrosion in the, there. And while I pulled everything I could out of it, and one of the most important things that I pulled out of it was uh, was this guy. And if you recognize what this guy is, this is important for an upcoming thing that I will make a video on because, uh, man, getting a replacement for this would actually be fairly difficult right now. I mean, not, not horribly expensive. Mm. I might have to replace it. We'll find out. <clears throat> Wait, no. It's fruity. Maybe I should take off the heatsink and look, huh? But anyway, I have a video coming up that will involve a, a, a card like this one. Um, you see, because while I was doing that experiment, oh, a bit of a, I guess this is a bit of a aside. While I was doing the salt experiment, I was also researching new servers to replace Lapis. Lapis is an FX, Find out. I mean, Lapis is an FX6300. It's literally 10 years old. I built it in 2012 and I expected it to last a year and it's been working there for 18 months. And we are starting to run into to not the processing limitations of that chip, but the IO limitations of that chip. We're just pushing bits too, too slow uh, for, for use, even for the, the modest things we're doing with it. So I was working on a new server, and that's why all these motherboards got all corroded and I can't use them now. Um, anyway, going back to the workstation, so I had to replace the workstation. The replacement is coming. It's supposed to land sometime in next month, and it's going to be interesting. I'll put it that way. In the meantime, I'm actually using this wonderful laptop that uh, Becky actually kind of splurged and got me, uh, you know, during my convalescence, I guess. Uh, is that a guilt purchase? You know, it's a great machine. I'm not going to think about it. It's great. It's a Dell Inspiron. It's like my seventh Dell Inspirons. Why do I keep buying them? Because you can fix them. Nothing like, you know, that things are not everything is soldered to the board and you can get parts and stuff like that. So I, I recommend them. And for the price, they're, they're pretty good. Um, and this one's great. I mean, it's a it's a Ryzen uh, 5000 series, six cores or uh, eight cores, 16 threads, 32 gig of RAM. Uh, two terabytes of NVMe. It's great, and of course I've already dropped it. But it sits here now, and while it's great, uh, and, and it works, um, it doesn't quite drive my, my desktop workstation set up very well, um, because I run two uh, 1080i monitors and a 4K monitor um, for console reasons. Like, I need a lot of pixels in my life. The keyboard obviously also died, just a bunch of keys on it, just, you know, stopped being keys. So that had to go, and, and you know, I'll use any, I, as an administrator, you just kind of have to get used to using whatever keyboard you got. And and while I will definitely do that, and I did do that for a couple days, uh, it's like, I you know, I went and got a keyboard for myself, but it ended up having red keys on it, so I gave it to Becky, and I actually really liked the look of this one. And then I got the Red Dragon key, 10 key list mechanical keyboard that literally everyone on, everyone on Amazon has bought. And you know, that suits me just fine. So that's what I've got right now. No, that's okay. I don't want to text that person. And so yeah, well I have a temporary workstation here. It's not really foot in the bill. A permanent workstation that's also a test for a possible future server is coming. And so, yeah, that's what happened. I kind of nuked everything in here and I kept a lot of my important equipment in here. It's already cost me a few hundred bucks. It's 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 gonna cost me a few hundred more. Um, that's all I, I'm kind of dumb sometimes. Thank you for your support uh, with Patreon, and I can specifically, it, it, rather than just point to all this and say you've helped all of all this, I can literally say you helped me dig myself out of literally incinerating my office with chemicals. Thanks so much.
Ah, it did this. Jeez. I'm willing to take a chance. I trust myself and act on that trust. I accept myself as I am. Success comes easy and natural for me. I believe in me. Come back. I like myself more and more each day. Let's see about power cycling it. I can do anything I want. Come <laughs> on!